Arkansas native Paul Smith is a graduate of Conway High School and Hendricks College. He's climbed the corporate ladder to his current position of Director of Consumer Research with world-renowned Procter & Gamble. He has a new book titled Lead with a Story. It's a compilation of interviews with more than 75 CEOs and executives. Paul, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Let's talk about this book. Uh, who are you trying to help? Who's your target audience? What are you trying to convey through the stories that you have in here? Yeah, so uh, it's definitely a leadership book. Uh, so for leaders, not necessarily business leaders, but it's, it's targeted mostly at them. But leaders, whether they're uh, business or scientists or doctors or lawyers or teachers or even, uh, you know, television you know, uh, hosts, <laughs> right? Right. So ev everybody, you know, that is going to succeed in something needs to be a leader in some way or another. And the, the point in the book is that um, leading by just bossing people around has never really worked that well. A and it's a much better way to lead by using stories to lead people where you want them to go as opposed to just tell them wh what to do. Tell me a little bit about how you came to the conclusion that bossing people around is not the best way to do yeah. it, but leading with a story by telling stories right. is a much more motivational and inspiring way to do this. Yeah, so after after working at P&G and, and some other places for a long time and, and you and I have been in the business world for a couple of decades now, you, you get to see what works well and what doesn't and I've noticed some very inspirational leaders and I've worked for them in my lifetime and, and some that have not been as much so and I noticed the difference between those were the ones that were great storytellers tended to be the more inspirational leaders that were more effective, the ones that I wanted to follow as a junior manager. I knew I wanted to I wanted to be good at that as well. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell a story that you have in the book here that a lot of people in Arkansas can relate to and that is Scott Ford, former CEO of Altel, uh, led them through the sale of that company to a private equity firm and then eventually to uh, what is now Verizon Wireless. Right. Tell the story about Scott Ford and the yellow cab. Yeah, so so back in 2007 I guess uh, Scott was the CEO of the company and that's when the company got bought the first time by a uh, venture capital firm out of New York, Goldman Sachs. And so when that happens, typically they change the management and Scott as the CEO is expected on his last day to deliver a big two hour presentation to the new owners of how to run this company. And he did it and he did it well, but he only used two PowerPoint slides, right? Which is, that's not what they were expecting. Um, and one of those was very important to them because it was a picture of a, a yellow cab in New York City with a gentleman trying to you know, get into the cab. And remember, these folks are, are from New York City. Um, and he explained to them at that point that I know that you're not buying this company for the long term. You know, you're a venture capital firm, you buy it, you improve it, change the management, do something, turn around two years later and sell it for a profit. That's what VC companies do. If you're going to do that, three things need to happen. You need to find one of the big companies to buy it, like a Verizon or an AT&T. Interest rates are going to have to be low, and the Department of Justice is going to have to be in a good mood to even allow this big of a purchase to happen. You know, that's an unusual convergence of events, kind of like hailing that cab in New York City. So the, the point he made them, to them was, when the cab shows up, get in, because it's not going to happen for a while. Well, sure enough, a year later, Scott hasn't been at the company for a year. He gets a phone call from one of those partners, and they said, hey, we got an offer on the table for $28 billion to buy you know, uh, Altel from us, and what do you think we should do? <laughs> Scott just sat there and didn't say a word for like, I'm sure an awkward 30 seconds on the phone. <laughs> and the guy finally said, this is the yellow cab, isn't it, Scott? Yeah. And he said, yeah, it is. And yeah. of course, they bought the company. Uh, again, the power of storytelling. Um, tell me what you did in terms of research for this book. Um, who, how did you go about organizing? How did you go about um, just, I mean, that's a daunting task to take on that many different stories, that many different executives. Right. Well, I didn't set out for it to be that many. I set out by, by doing some of the research and the books and, and academic articles that have been written on this in the past. But as I started interviewing leaders to, to get stories for the book, I ended up finding that they were using storytelling in far more situations than I had imagined. And in fact, the, what the book is is a compilation of 21 leadership challenges where storytelling really can help the executive be a better leader. And as I would contact one uh, CEO executive after the other, I'd, I'd find another one and another one that was you know, willing to interview for the book and just kept finding these fabulous stories. And so it turned into you know, probably 75 executives and uh, 50 companies, 13 countries around the world. So it ended up being bigger than I honestly thought it would be when I started. Yeah, I know that you love them all like your children, okay? Yeah. But you got to tell me, yeah. I've interviewed thousands of people yeah. over the last decade, and so there are some interviews that just stand out. Mm -hmm. Tell me kind of what stood out to you in terms of maybe one or two interviews that you think really were kind of the, the, the best of the best. Yeah, so... Uh, the interviews, like you said, they were all good. In fact, they were better than I expected because I didn't expect a lot of people, to, quite frankly, to be good storytellers. You know, I, I think of interviews I did with uh, Sarah Matthew, the CEO of Dun & Bradstreet, um, John Bryant, the CEO of Kellogg's, and here are 
These are two leaders that prior to being the CEO were the chief financial officer of their companies and had grown up through the financial and accounting ranks in their companies. Not exactly the background that you would think would lead to a, a gregarious, you know, oh, storytelling person. Bean person. counters, yeah, bean yeah, counters exactly. are great you know, storytellers. That's where I started in my <laughs> career. You know, I didn't expect that. And here these two leaders were now the CEOs of their companies, and they had phenomenal stories to tell, which I was, you know, fortunate enough to get to capture in the book. So I think people rise to the occasion, and at that point in their career, they realize if I want to be a really effective leader, I need to be a good storyteller, and they, they've done it. Tell me a little bit about how you've organized this. It's very succinct. The chapters are not so long that somebody's going to get lost in them. There's some good notes in there. There's some action items in there. Tell me about how you organize that and why yeah. you organize it that way. Yeah, uh, I wanted it to be very useful and practical as opposed to some long academic tomb for somebody to, to wade through. In fact, if you want to read the book cover to cover, I'm, I, I hope that you find it enjoyable. But if you find yourself in a leadership challenge like, well, today I've got to uh, set a vision for my organization or I need to coach Bob and Sally on how to work together to you know better, then look up the chapter on setting a vision or the chapter on getting people to collaborate better and then four or five pages you're going to have four or five great stories that will help you accomplish your task and it's a proven story because it's worked at several you know some other place. Let's pivot from the book for a second. I can't have a Procter and Gamble executive on here and not ask you some questions about what's going on in the economy. For me and everything that I read it's almost a two steps forward one and a half steps back. Uh, kind of staccato kind of approach to what we're seeing in the economy. You do a lot of consumer research. What are you seeing out there? What's your take? Yeah, uh, consumers still buy the kind of products we make. You know, uh, Procter, we, we're not making, uh, you know, uh, Mercedes Benz automobiles or multi million dollar homes, right? We make the kind of products that people buy, you know, laundry detergent and diapers and paper towels, and people are always going to need those things. So I'm fortunate to be in a, a great industry. The company's been around 175 years, and I think it'll be around 175 years more for exactly that reason. All right. He is Paul Smith. The book is Lead with a Story. You can find it at Amazon.com. You can find it at Barnes & Noble, and just pretty much look it up online, and you'll find it. Thanks for being here, Paul. Thank you. Great All to right. be here. Time to drill down into the state's latest jobless numbers. For July, it was a turbulent month in Arkansas. We'll tell you what bounced around right after this.